Hi everyone, uh, today I'm just going to show you a few tricks about um, working in Logic as a singer-songwriter. Um, I'm using a cheap MXL V67, a very cheap microphone. Um, MXL, you know, I think they're made in China and just cheap and nasty as we call them, but I'm going to use this because I'm going to sing on a track, um, just an original song, so and show you how to uh, quickly track original stuff um, in Logic, especially I'm, in, I'm a keyboard player. I've got a, um, a MIDI controller, my Korg uh, Chrome EX is over here, and it's just USB'd in to my Mac. Um, and I've got my old um, 70s well, it's a 200A here hooked up as well for something a little bit real. Um, and I'm tracking the whole thing through my Steinberg UR824. It's not an expensive uh, piece of kit, a USB audio interface. Works with PC and Mac, and they're very popular. Um, it might even be an old model by now, really. It's USB. works great for me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just using the two, um, two uh, inputs on the face of it. One for my condenser microphone with uh, 48 volts, of course, and a guitar cable, instrument cable, going into the headphone jack of my old Whirly, which is an old mono instrument, noisy and hissy. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, I'm using an audio input here in my in my track. I've just, um, I'm just simply going to, I'm just have it on audio input monitoring. You don't really need to know about that. I'm just going to hide it. And start again. So that's just so you can hear my vocals along with this recording. Okay, drummer track. <clears throat> I know my tempo is about a hundred, uh, about seventy-five. So I'm going to just have a listen to the drum track. Okay, <clears throat> it'll be okay. I'm just writing a song here. Four bars intro. Let's uh, just put that there, and then we'll just go um, from there. I'm going to open up this Global Tracks button here, and we're going to use the arrangement part. So first, I'm going to put in the intro, and I'm going to drag it back, and it's going to be a four-bar intro. I'm going to press the plus button, create a brand new one. It's going to be uh, the chorus. That's the way that I've structured the song. Chorus is eight bars, as that is default on. And then um, I'm going to put some drums, press the plus button, have a listen. Just pulling back the fills here. That'll do for now. Then we'll go to a verse. Gonna call that verse. You can rename it, call it verse one if you like, but I'm just gonna make a verse and a chorus, show you how the arrangement part works. Um, then just have a listen to our make sure that that's a hi hat. Just turning the little thing down so a little bit softer, simpler. And I know that the verse is going to be uh, 10 bars. So I can just drag that out to 10. I think I can normally just... Bam. Okay. Better to drag the arrangement out first. The, d the drum track is just following. And it's hi-hat. normally puts in fills every eight bars or four bars depending on how much you got this turned up um, I don't mind a little fill there I think it'll be okay <clears throat> remember these are I'm writing a song so I don't need these drums to be perfect uh, it'll be a drummer later or I'll be just pitching the song to someone anyway right so here here's a song I wrote what do you think uh, do you want to sing it or you know um, give it to a drummer or a guitarist and say you know I want you to play on this track it's basic here it is and here's the chord chart. So I'm just building an original from the very first scratch track. 
Okay, got my verse bars, intro, chorus, and verse. Going to cr uh, create uh, an audio track for my old Whirly here. Going to call it Whirly. Whoops. Whirly. Going to color it brown because it's old. And I'm going to... Uh, it's in input two. Now, when we listen to it, it's very noisy. And because um, I've had this whirly for a long time and I've figured out a way to reduce um, its noise and this is how I do it. I'm going to leave it um, annoying you right now with the buzz as I fix it. Window, open MIDI environment. Used to be just the environment and the old logic. Um, I'm grabbing the whirly track that I've created and I'm holding option and I'm going to create a copy. It's still selected. I change its channel to the input that I'm using, input two. Now this channel is input two's channel. So I go to my settings. I've already set one up. Whirly in. And there it is. So what it what this is is I've got an EQ. Which gets through just a few buzzes and and um, you know high hisses and stuff and I've got a compressor on there just to warm it back up again give it a little bit of a sponge and a single EQ knocking off the high end where it hisses 4.6 K so that is uh, a much better improvement now this here what I've shown you here in the MIDI environment is a way to turn a cheap thing into an expensive sounding thing. I've got this cheap little microphone here, the MXL V67. Um, it's normally in my six year old studio upstairs. It's just his little play thing. Thought I'd just show you something um, cheap and, and easy to use. On my vocal channel, uh, if I'll just create one, I'll just get rid of this and create a vocal track. I'll just mute the whirly for, for now. Uh, new audio track. This will be my be my vocals, <clears throat> and it'll be input one. Uh, it will have some reverb on it, and uh, I want it to sound just a little different to this microphone. So if I wanted to, look, I, I quite like this microphone. Let will just go to uh, open MIDI environment. If I grab that track. Do the same thing, select, change it to input one, which you're hearing right now through this microphone. If I apply an EQ to it, I can change and add tops or some bottom or get rid of some honking rids in the middle, anything like that. So I basically can use Logic plugins, especially the ones with very low latency like the EQs and compressors, um, as my virtual rack of gear. So if I don't have, I'm just using a very basic um, audio interface and in and uh, in, interface and preamp in the interface. I'm not using a, a you know any of my other fancy ones with compressors and everything on them. So if I want to add compression on the way in forever, I can add a compressor as well. So let me just put this back. Ding ding ding. Add a compressor here. And choose the compressor that I'm going to use. Uh, remember, each compressor has a different sound. I could call up a vocal, light vocal setting. Do, 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 do. Adding whatever I like, right? As my sound. Pull back your hair. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I wanted to record that wet through that. Then I, then I could. This is my virtual rack of gear. But remember, everything that goes through here and gets recorded on the track is like that forever. You cannot undo it. So it is handy for, handy for me to get the noise off my whirly or change uh, an incoming guitar signal to level it out, limit it so it doesn't distort before it hits my amp sim or something like that. Um, just a little trick. Okay. Back to the whirly, my little 
a buzzing whirly there. Let me just change, the, show you what we're doing here. So we've got a drummer track. I'm going to hit the record button and go back two bars, counting. So that's record settings, two bars counting. So when I press record, it will jump back two bars and give me a, you know, a, a bit of a, a metronome count. I'll go over here and play some chords for the intro, the chorus and the verse. Just um, bear with me and let's, um, let's see how this works. Made a mistake already. Let's go again. So we'll just, I'm going to slice it. I'm going to put my snap on bar, slice it exactly on the bar. I don't want to create a take track. I don't want this to record on top of it. So, so, so I'll just leave it there, press record. It'll go back two bars. Straight back to the chorus from there. So I'm going to slice that right on the bar and get rid of that little tail. So, whirly is done. <clears throat> we're going to go back to, we're going to go to vocals now. Um, I better just put a little limiter on my, not adaptive limiter, that's going to add some uh, delay, <clears throat> some latency. Uh, just a normal limiter here to make, sh just to babysit my output. So it doesn't go over anything. So, uh, vocals. Let's color these suckers blue. Uh, I'm going to just press record. And we're listening to two vocals now. I'll just mute my input monitor. So now you're hearing the vocals through um, naturally as they sound in my logic thing. I'm going to create a bus for reverbs just for listening pleasure. A stereo bus. I'm going to go to for my chroma verb. Dirty chamber. Two, 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 two. Just like that. Maybe a little longer. Uh huh. Uh huh. <clears throat> All right. Let's uh, do a little bit of vocals now. I don't need the intro. I just want to sing the chorus here. Make sure I've got my lyrics correct here too. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always uh, take one off, just one ear off. Just helps me pitch better. It's going to be crappy, all right? But, you know, we're learning here. We're learning. Don't have to put that on the input monitoring anymore. 
Oh, here we go. Two bars, run up. Straight into the chorus. Uh, so, back to me. That's my vocals tracked. Um, I do have um, the ability to chop just the chorus um, in my arrangement, drag with uh, using option, and it'll take the chorus and all of its um, elements with it. Just undo that. For the time being, so we're going to add some more stuff to it. Um, let's going to go to software instrument. Uh, I think that we'll just put a server, a multi sample sampler. Make it a mono track because I just want to put some a bass sound here. Bass, electric bass, uh, session bass is okay. It's a little chorusy, but it'll be fine. Just pull the guts out here uh, and a little bit more of about uh, 200 Hertz ish just cut a bit of that out as well a lot of guys cut deep here um, and it's probably gonna be way too loud let's listen to it okay so this is just using a straight out logic uh, sample it comes with logic uh, let's track the bass for these parts now before i start i'm going to quantize while it's selected up here on quantize select 16 not one sixteenth note because that's the groove that i like uh, and i'm going to set up um, i already have in my key commands something called capture so if you write capture as recording so shift return is my key command for capture as recording very very cool you can use this for audio tracks that are armed as well um, this will help you in certain record modes uh, punch in mode I think it works um, you just play along even though it's record arms you're not actually recording there's no pressure on you there's no red light syndrome so you're just playing along and uh, if you like something that you've done you can just press capture and there it is you don't have to, um, you know, so as you'll see when I when I drop in here, I'll just go back a bar or so, put on my metronome. <clears throat> Playing MIDI. O already made a mistake. <laughs> Press capture. It captures um, back to the to the last bar. I'm okay. I'm I'm fairly happy with that. So that's um, 
just the fact that I've got too much reverb on my vocal and I'm always in mix modes freaking me out. <laughs> and there's also a bit of an e happening here in my e Right there. Everyone's got their frequency. The Logic EQ freezes and shows me where it is. Right there. Me, me. Okay, let's move on to the verse. Now notice that I'm playing my own bass. I'm, 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 I haven't pro, I've just got these drums on automatic, right? They're going to follow my bass the way I'm playing the rhythms. The kick drums will follow my bass. So I'm thinking, how do I want the groove to sound? The bass is playing along with my you know imaginary kick drum it may not be the one that's playing at the moment but it will be when i finish tracking this um this keyboard bass let's go again me, rescue me. people on the world are you listening to all my soul brothers yes every man Okay, wasn't perfect, but hey, we're just writing a song here, right? So um, what I'm going to do now is I'll go to my drum track here, make sure I've got them all selected, and I'll click on follow, and I'll ch choose the session bass. Now the kick drums have all just changed, and they're, they're just going to play. So the, the bass is following along, the kick drum is following generally along with um, the kick and, you know, the, the session bass that I've tracked. So if my uh, studio dog Harley doesn't, um, you know, it's probably a postie, time for the postie. We're going to put on some backing vocals now and show you a new trick. I'm just going to create a new track, call it BVs color you say uh, orange he's, con he's consistent really right and let's go to um, input one exactly the same press record I've got a double door on my studio let me just um, shut it hey bear with, bear with me man alright I'll be right back run over Man's best friend. They'll be scratching at the door after, <laughs> after a while. <laughs> Let me back in, Daddy. All right, BVs, back in vocal time. Um, I've worked out a pattern over the chorus. It's going to be eight bars. So I'm just going to just move and stretch my loop, uh, my cycle range up here to eight bars get rid of this so i'm just looking at the eight bars of the chorus only <clears throat> um the i'll leave the vocals in sometimes people don't like to sing harmonies with their uh with the vocals going i don't mind so i'll just hear a little bit i'm going to track with one ear off anyway um the way i normally do backing vocals is i'm normally in the booth using my ipad to press <coughs> to, to press record, um, controlling logic, and I know it's in in cycle mode, so I'm going to record uh, takes now, a bunch of on top of each other, and I know that also the um, when I'm coming back out of the booth and I've done all my backing vocals, I'm doing three part harmony here. I like to do two of each, 
myself, that's my style, two of each, and um, I like to do two in a row and then leave one go as a gap so that I can recognize the takes later. So I'll just let my dog back in. He's scratching at the door. And I'll press record and I'm going to do three three part harmony for you. Here we go. <clears throat> You're a good dog. Sometimes. Every studio needs a good dog, huh? This is a this is a spoodle too, so he doesn't drop hair and doesn't end up in all my gear. But hey, he requires attention. And uh, you know. Alright, backing vocals, here we go. <clears throat> Let's go, here we go, just the chorus, eight bars. Okay, done our backing vocals. Back to our audio input here. Now, here's my stacks here. I'm just going to choose to unpack. Right, unpack. 
switch them all on. I know that these guys in the middle were just waiting, so I'll get rid of those. Put them all together. These are all laying on the same track as well. So um, if I press play, you're only going to hear one of them. Um, I do want to play them all at once. Uh, I will back it up a little bit so it gets the breathe in and I'll take it off the end. Off. I'll put a, while they're all selected, fade in, fade out. So they all have fade in and out. And now let's create some new tracks. Six tracks. Their output I'm going to put to a brand new bus, bus two. Create six tracks. Let's go into mix mode. While they're here, let's rename the first one and call it. Now notice how I use my right mouse click there rather than double clicking. I want to keep them all selected. Type in BV1, enter, and they all automatically name in numeric because I've used a number. If you put a space after, um, then they all, they're all called BV1. BV1 space, they're all called BV1. So that's the trick. Rename BV1, and they're all there. So they're going to bus two, which I'm going to name BVs. I didn't um, name the uh, reverb. I'll just call that rev bus. Okay, BV bus. I know that I'm going to take off the bottom end a bit. I'm going to shine up the tops, pull out a bit of the honky bit in the middle. I'm going to compress them uh, very hard. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to, you know, let's just use a preset, Vox, uh, vocal hard, it's got a high ratio, it cuts in deep and, you know, it's attack still slow-ish, hard, I think it's pretty good, okay. Uh, and I'll just bust in a little bit of that rev, just a little bit of it on the backing vocals as well, rather than put it on each one of them. Um, I'm going to pan them around a bit, left and right, a little bit left, a little right, right, a little bit full left like that, so they're just mucking around a bit. I know um, I'm, I could probably bring them down a bit, but I think they're okay in volume. Um, I'll show you why. So I can, I know that when I sang the high harmonies here on take one and two, they were the high, and because they're up high, they are louder. So I'm going to bring them down and gain. Just select the two, come over here, come over here. Pull them down till they look about the same gain. The bottom ones were a little bit soft because they're low, so I'm going to push them up. So that's sort of got a balance. The mid range, maybe, you know, I think it's all right. All right. So now I'm going to pull those guys down here onto the playback tracks. Just get rid of all of these other ones that were created. Let's hear them without uh, anything, without these guys. Uh, not the high buttons. Just looking through my popper stopper here and, and miss miss hit. Okay, so you get it? Unpacking and the way that I've treated those backing vocals. Um, that's a pretty easy trick um, when you're in when you're in cycle mode. If you're a, if you're a, um, a singer songwriter, go to your position in the corner of the room or wherever you set up your vocals, your mic. Um, if you don't have Logic Control on an iPad or something like that, or your or your your cell phone, then on your iPhone, you um, just Press record with a pre-roll. It'll give you enough bars um, up to it. 
you sing your parts, you work them out in advance, <clears throat> you sing them, you get them right twice in a row, pan them around, and it gives you that spatial thing. I mean, that's just for this sort of sound, right? For that gospel-y sort of sound. Um, so I've created my song. Remember, I can drop down my little arrangement bar again and th throw in this chorus over here. Remember, the ba the backing vocals have a little bit of a preamp for the, for the vocals in. Fade in. I sing... Um, I just keep the same chorus there or sing another one. It doesn't bother me. Um, this one might be a little bit... Um, remember, this song will eventually have guitars and real bass player and real drummer. So I'm not really that concerned about the instrumentation on, um, you know, on the drum track and things like that. It's really putting down the song fast before the idea is gone, right? So um, I know that there'll be another verse... Uh, so I can just drag this one over here, <clears throat> get rid of the vocal, and sing the second verse on. Give myself a couple of uh, bars run up, grab my lyrics. Record vocals. <clears throat> Man. See how this goes. Etc. Um, there's probably a bit of pitch issues in there. I could show you how I fix that in Logic's um, flex mode, if you like. Let's go back over here. Memories that linger. I'll just put this in flex mode. Choose flex pitch. Let it uh, check the tran check to the transients. If I um, in case I need to change the tempo, it's detected the the, uh, the pitch, and I'm going to just zoom in. Memories that linger take me home again. Red sand through my fingers, blowing in the wind. All this time, I'm wondering. Center now, now, now I'm on my way to a brighter day to rescue me. I didn't sing it too bad. So, uh, in here, you can remember if you're in the middle of a, of a note. A chance. So, if I wanted that to go, ch chance, another chance, I could always cut here. Okay, pull the vibrato back a bit, bring it up a note. Grab it in the middle with Mr. Grabby Hand. I remember seeing a, a, a early Pro Tools uh, clinic in my local retailer and the guy showing us the multi-tool. And he says, this is the MPF tool, or Mr. Pointy Finger, and the MGH tool, Mr. Grabby Hand. Uh, it was pretty funny at the time. Okay, Mr. Grabby Hand, in the middle. Let's just go up our full tone. So you get the gist. Put the vibrato back. Another chance. So you can sort of still modify stuff in the middle of a note if you want. Um, and as far as timing goes, take me home again. Memories that linger. So I would want that to go. Memories that linger. Do 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 do. Memories that linger. Okay, so the linger 
Now there's different ways of doing this. There's uh, ways where you can pull the whole track and everything before and after, right? Lassoed, which will take, uh, I know that the linger I want on that beat, I'm just lining it up with this up there. Is it linger? It's different, using different um, keys along. I'm, I'm holding control for this, which is banding between the two anchor notes that are already detected. Memories that linger. Still reckon that be back a touch. Memories that linger. There we go. Take me home again. Okay, so you know, you, that's how you make your modifications. If you've got a bass guitar in there and you find that he's playing a little bit before a kick drum or something, you can just nudge him. Bef you know, it's always good to um, throw your eyes over a little bit of that. Um, but, you know, mainly that is going to uh, change my pitch. Um, just fix a, a note here and there. If I decide, because I'm writing songs here, if I decide that I want to change the, the tempo or key, Flex mode is the way that I do it. So I can go to one of my backing vocals, select them all, press flex mode, just turn it on, on each one. Monophonic perhaps is a good start, starting point. <clears throat> Monophonic gives you the less, you know, less chorusing and sort of effect. So, all right, let's... Okay, so what I'm going to do is, they're all f um, flexed, that's flexed, the whirly, let's uh, put it in flex, monophonic as well. I'm going to change the tempo now, and the key. So let's go to 80 beats a minute, listen back. Calling someone who will rescue me. And now we'll go up here to select the audio, Whirly, the vocals, and all of these guys. Make sure I'm using the right tool here. Um, remember, I don't need to change uh, drums, like, you know. Drums musical instrument, right? I don't need to transpose drums. So I've selected everything here and I can just go to transpose. Transpose, let's, it's in C, let's bring it down to A, it'll sound a bit weird. Down three semitones, minus three. Have a listen. Calling someone who will rescue me. I'm so low. So, so now I'll use this because I write for other people and I might, they might just say, you know, what is it? And I always give them a version with my vocal in it and then a version without my vocal. And I might want to keep all those backing vocals in their karaoke version that they're going to sing along to get the gist of the song. So they might say, uh, it's a little low. Can you bring it up a tone or something, you know, rather, and I just would rather keep the drums where they are and just take and MIDI's transposed up and everything just comes up. I mean, remember, this is just a scratch track. When you've got your arrangement correct and you would have, maybe you changed the intro and it's got um, a little bit of a, a beginning of the chorus in it. Um, bang, it might be just two bars. Once you've changed your arrangement and you've got it all here in your scratch track, then you go, okay, song's finished, um, we've decided the key, the tempo, the speed, you know, the uh, the arrangement, how many bars everything is, and basically how everything transitions into each other. Now let's get into putting, leave the guide vocal on, and put a click track on and record the drums, record uh, real bass, guitar, with your old guide vocal, and then um, the singer can come in, if it's not me, uh, if it is me, I can sing my my last my my vocal right in the end when all everyone's in the organ and the, the choir and girls singing the backing vocals instead of me things like that. So you can choose how big this one goes, or as a songwriter, you can just bounce it down 
um, once of course once you've added your bridge and finished completed the song bounce it down and send it off as an mp3 with the lyrics to uh to your artist who's um who you're pitching it to so look this is just a way that um, me being a keyboard player and vocalist how i write how i use logic to write and how i um just my workflow of, of making things a little bit faster remember i use this arrangement thing because someone might want a double chorus here so they might want to move this on and put another chorus in in between um double chorus so it's easy for me just to go bang 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 and send it off to them to rearrange the song this is in arrangement mode so this is a scratch um, pad remember logic has tons and tons of instruments if i wanted to go in here and add uh add some acoustic and electric stuff and some organ i've got all the instruments in there um and you know the backing vocals um can you know i can add extra layers and things like that along that's really making a record this is songwriting in its most basic form if i was a guitar player i could play roll, um, proper bass on instead of using this the midi one and still get the drums to follow my notes so i could still go to the bass track the audio track that i used and the kick drum would follow my rhythm it's only a drummer i mean this these drum um, tracks sound fantastic but it is only a scratch pad so i hope you have learnt from um, what we've done today it is um, a fantastic tool to work with logic um, and i and i do have other videos mixing more complicated things um, so check them out if you want and um, for now it's goodbye from me thanks for subscribing if you're not tick the box hey eh? see ya